Hello, welcome to Book Zone. I'm Nina Sebastian. With me in the studio today is Exit Music's author, Ian Rankin. Welcome to the studio. Thank you. So for those who haven't grown old and fallen in love with Rebus again and again and again, what's the story about? Um, well, Detective Inspector John Rebus works in Edinburgh, um, the city that I live in, and he's been around for 20 years now. He was 40 when we first met him in 1987. It's now 2007, and Exit Music is his final book as a serving police officer. I like the title, by the way. It's a nice title. It's the title of an album by a guy called Stephen Lindsay, who's a Scottish singer-songwriter, but it's also the title of a track from Radiohead, so it works both ways. Um, and yeah, we, uh, we actually had a competition on my website to see if fans could guess what the final title might be and nobody got it. But <laughs> there were some really good ones which I've tucked away for future books. That's fairly sad though, isn't it? I mean, I have to say, you know, writing in. But d at any point, did you come in with a, that's a great title, I wish I'd picked that. Well, one, one, one or two, I mean, The Final Cut, which is a Pink Floyd album, I thought would have been a good title yes. for it as well. Um, the Last Time, which is The Rolling Stones, yes. I've used them before for titles. There were plenty of good titles and some really bad ones as well. The Prime of Mr. John Rebus was <laughs> never was never going to cut it as one of my books. Um, but so this, I mean, this new book follows his last ten days as a cop because right. I, I discovered a few years ago that cops in Scotland, CID, um, have to retire at sixty. Okay. And so real time has caught up with John Rebus at last. And I mean, and it is literally because he was forty in eighty seven. It's two thousand and seven. Hey presto, yeah. exit music, and. I don't believe it's the end, though. It, it can't possibly be the finish. Well, it can, um, <laughs> unless they change the law. <laughs> Questions have been asked in um, the Scottish Parliament to maybe change the law to <laughs> make the Edinburgh cops retire at 65 so Rebus can have another five years. I don't believe it. I mean, there are, you know, people have been suggesting to me things that can happen. He can come back and, and work on cold cases, um, unsolved. Yeah. Retired cops do that a lot. We could go back in time and see some of his early cases because he's already been a cop for 15 years when we first meet him. Good. So there's a lot there we don't know. So there's know. a little dangled carrot there. Well, there's like the Siobhan, his assistant, his colleague, who's an excellent character, I think, and I, and I would like to write about her in future. I read something that you said Rebus has been your punch bag mm. and your psychiatrist, really, mm. for the best part of 20 years. So you're going to have to pay for a therapist now. Absolutely. I mean, I just don't know if I can live without him. He can live without me, but can I live without <laughs> him? Because, I mean, although the inside of his head isn't always the easiest place to be, and I'm in it for seven or eight months of the year. Yeah, um, I mean, you could have picked anybody. I mean, Mary Poppins, it, but you picked, you know, D.I. John Rebus. But he's, his thing is he has lots of vices that I, that I then don't have to have in real life, you know. He smokes on my behalf. You're jealous and, uh, of him, aren't you? I think every married man who reads the books is a little bit jealous <laughs> of him because he gets to lead this bachelor existence of playing Hawkwind albums late at night too loud, falling asleep on the sofa with his clothes on and waking up in the morning and going straight to work, smoking and drinking without getting the concomitant hangovers that the rest of us suffer. That's quite sad. It is yeah, quite, sad. quite sad. Now, women readers <laughs> like him because they think they can change him. That's true. <laughs> they think they're the very women to change this complex, damaged character. Yeah, I mean, your background couldn't be further away from John Rebus's background. You know, you went to university, came out with you know, flying colours. Um, he, however, left school at 16, SAS background. You know, mm. how do you marry the two? Well, in fact, his background is identical to mine. He grew up in the same street in the same town. It's just that he didn't, well, he wasn't clever enough, in inverted commas, to go to university. But I was the first member of my family to go to university. Everybody else left school at 15, 16. Some of them joined the armed forces. So, I mean, I do have armed forces personnel. And what Rebus did was, when you leave school at 15, 16, in Fife at that time, in Fife in Scotland at that time, you would join the police or join the armed forces if you were a bloke. There wasn't much else to do. And he joins the armed forces, parachute regiment, trains for the SAS, unsuccessful, gets kicked out, becomes a cop later on. So he does both the jobs that were probably available to, to young men at that time from mm. a working class background. So we're actually are more similar than you might imagine. Yeah, I mean, let's touch on that a bit more. As I say, you know, for somebody who perhaps has ideas of becoming an author or a writer who doesn't necessarily, you know, hasn't managed to get into college or university or whatever. It doesn't matter. I mean, in Where fact, do you get it your helps if you don't. It helps if you don't go to university. I mean, certainly That's don't study. Don't study literature, whatever you do, because <laughs> what you do then is you just start picking books apart. You try yeah. to get the nuts and bolts, and you yeah. you lose sight of the magic. Well, you studied you studied Scottish literature. Well, I, I studied American literature as an undergraduate, and then I was desperate. To, I didn't like being out in the cold, wide commercial world, so I, I pleaded to go back to Edinburgh University to do a PhD. And they said, "Well, you won't get you money." Didn't, you didn't want to get a proper job. That's no, what no, it was. Exactly. I you didn't. were too scared. It just no, what I wanted to do was to be subsidised by the state while I wrote my own novels. So I went back to do Scottish Literature PhD because I got funding from the Scottish Government for that. Um, and immediately I got the money, I just started writing my own books. And the three years that I was funded to do a PhD, I never finished a PhD, but I wrote three novels. <laughs> 
And the first one was never published. The second one was published. And the third one was the first Inspector Rebus. So by the time I left university, Inspector Rebus had already been born. So don't go to university. Don't, we don't, do, need don't, to go to university. don't dismantle your books. Don't overanalyze them. I mean, all you need to be a writer, really, is to have um, a very thick skin, because mm. you're going to get lots of knockbacks and lots of rejection. You've got to have complete faith in yourself that you've got a story worth telling and characters that are worth people reading about. And you've got to have a lot of luck. Ian, thanks ever so much for coming in and telling us about Exit Music. I don't believe it's Exit for, for D.I. John Reeves.